live from Guinness Amplify live here in Four Dame Lane and I've got two of the members of the band Code Line, Steve Garrigan and Mark Prendergast. So guys, thanks a million for joining me first of all. Um, our pleasure, no, it's amazing down here today. We just played upstairs and yeah, the atmosphere is great. So. so guys, I remember in school seeing you play as 21 Demands and then this weekend you've just played Glastonbury. What a difference. How far you've come. It's pretty amazing. I mean, uh, yeah, like we played a, we played a lot of schools and stuff back in the day, and you know, Twenty One Demands was our kind of band when we were teenagers, and I mean, we were from River Valley, myself and Mark, you know, and uh, there was guys in the front row with a River Valley sign that said Valley Forever, and at Glastonbury, which was pretty amazing. Big crowd, it's about thirty thousand or so. And I suppose, what is the best? Th you know, what has been the highlight for you so far? Um, there's been like a few. Bastonbury was one. We got a chance to do the O2, or the point, as we call it, growing up. So um, there's been a lot of things, you know, Kings of Leon this Friday, that's going to be a big one because it's Kings of Leon, that's in Dublin. Um, there's a lot of highlights, I don't know, it's tough to pick one. And for you, I know, Steve, you've been riding with Harry Styles, um, another major milestone probably in your career. And you know what was that like and is he going to go on and continue a solo career himself? Um, I, we're not entirely sure I mean the way it came about is he just came to a gig and you know we we ended up in a studio we had a few hours off we wrote a song with him a pretty cool song we have no idea what it's going to be used for but uh, he's a good guy and really cool down to earth dude so yeah it was a lot of fun. Um, I had to laugh yesterday I was watching um, Love Like This and you literally were beaten up by so many women in that uh, in that video. How many times did you get slapped in that? Uh, I've kind of lost count. I mean, it was a rough day, you know, 500, 600 times, you know, I don't know. It was, yeah, I got, uh, I got pretty bashed and I fell down the stairs and then Mark just hit me all the time, you know. A couple of times, give him a few digs, you know. Yeah, it looked, it looked pretty... I, I, I think it looked like it. Yeah, it looked like it. <laughs> um, so I suppose a lot of your songs, you know, they talk about love and I suppose heartbreak. Do you have terrible luck with women, guys? Yes, we, we must. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's an awkward question to answer, but yes. Has it gotten better with Codeline? Um, I don't know. Has it, Steve? I don't know. Has it, Mark? No comment. And I suppose um, you, what's, your album is coming out soon, so you've got an album coming up next, is that right? Yeah, we've been working on our second album. We were over in America there like last month and uh, we did a bit of recording in Temple Bar actually, that was pretty cool. We've never recorded in the centre of Dublin before, it's quite interesting. But um, yeah, we're hoping to kind of have it out early next year. We've got like five, six, six or seven tracks down, something like that. Yeah, we're really, really excited about it. Hopefully early next year. And speaking about recording, I suppose Amplify Live is all about mentoring new bands and everybody knows how hard it is to get a band started. So I suppose, you know, who really got behind you? What made, what was the difference? What was the catalyst for Codeline? Um, I don't know. We, we, first thing we did was kind of get our songs together, you know, the most important thing. And then we just got picked up by a producer named Steve Harris and he got us a deal. Um, with a label and then it just kind of started from there so but we, we put years of groundwork in before without any of those people and trying to get gigs and stuff and it's very hard when you haven't got that so the fact that Guinness and, and Amplifier are getting involved in such a huge way because they're doing more than just a gig you know it's recording and there's workshops and there's gonna be a lot of eyes on it as well because obviously the, the industry care about it so I think it's gonna be great for new bands. Now, the three of us here are all Swords people, so I couldn't, I couldn't go away without asking them, what's the best thing about being from Swords? Uh, here, where do I start? I mean, Swords is such a great town. Mark? I suppose we fly a lot, and it's near the airport, but there's, <laughs> I suppose the, there's great people, our friends, there's a lot of pubs, a lot of pubs, and uh, I don't know, it's, my house is there, so it's handy to live there. I want, do you do you miss it at all when you're on tour? Yeah, big time, yeah. On our tour bus, Mark's got a little picture of swords in his bunk <laughs> that he just like, you know, kind of kisses goodnight every night before he goes to bed. So. You kiss it as well, Steve. I know. Steve has a kiss. Staying true to your roots well, guys. Thanks a million. And I can't wait to see more for the, from these guys.